If you want to master AI in 2026, there are 10 AI skills that you need to learn today. Hi everyone, I'm Ishan Sharma and the biggest opportunity of this new year is helping companies adopt AI solutions. I'll share what these skills are, how can you learn them and what tools can you use for it. The first skill is prompt engineering. The more explicit the prompt, the better the output. No matter if you're using ChatGPT, Nano Banana Pro, creating videos with VO3, the biggest thing you will face is entering a concise and explicit prompt to get the best output possible. And that's what prompt engineering is all about. It's all about giving these AI models enough context about the problem that you want to solve so that it gives you the best output which is great for your use case. The easiest prompting technique for chat GPT is RTCROS. I've talked about this before. You first give it a role, give it a task, give it context, give it how do you want to reason through this problem. You give it the output format and at the end you give it a stopping condition. And if you want to create better images and videos using Nano Banana Pro and VO3, it's all about how structured your prompt is. Everything from the scene, from the color, to the aspect ratio, the text that you want, the font that you want, all of these things add up in your prompt to make sure that the output is better than ever. Skill number two is building AI agents. These are automated systems that can perform end-to-end -end tasks for any use case. There are several tools like Langchain, Crew AI, Agent Kit from OpenAI that enable you to build these AI agents end-to-end. -end. But at the core of it all, it's simply a AI model like ChatGPT or Gemini or Claude, which has access to memory so it has context and it also has access to tools with which it can perform several tasks. So you can create a simple finance researcher agent. You can create a simple itinerary travel agent. Think of them as automated employees who are doing your work on your behalf without your input. Now, if one of your goals of 2026 is to upskill and become more competent in your field, Coursera Plus could be a great place to get started. With Coursera Plus, you get access to thousands of courses across AI, data, business, humanities, and more, all taught by industry leaders and experts. You get professional certificates and specializations from the top companies and universities like Google, IBM, Microsoft, and Meta. But the biggest advantage is building a habit of learning because at the end of the day, who you become Come is shaped by what you do every day. Even putting one hour a day can completely change where you are at the end of the year. You can enroll in your favorite courses, learn at your own pace and really go deep into a subject until you feel confident to apply it in real life. Check out the link in the description to get 50% off Coursera Plus for the entire year. And now let's get back to the next skill. The third skill to learn is workflow automation in which you're connecting apps that trigger action for repetitive tasks. For example, Let's say you want to generate an invoice every time a company has accepted your proposal. That could be a very simple automation that goes from Gmail, takes all the information about the company, about the agreement, pulls it onto your invoice generator, generates the invoice and emails it back to them. That's a very simple example of automating a repetitive task using workflow automation tools. Now, there are various tools that you can use. For example, NA10, you can use make.com, you can use Zapier. And the best part, you're not using code. It's all drag and drop. And at max, you're learning about API endpoints, post and get requests. You learn a bit about JSON objects and how to send data from one app to another. And if you just know that much, that's enough for you to build these automations yourself. And if you want to start making these automations, I've made an in-depth tutorial using make.com to show you how to connect apps and create these automations step by step. The fourth skill to learn is AI coding assistants. So these are tools that assist you for writing code, for debugging, for fixing any errors. And at the very end of the day, helping you write code and get to market faster. So let's say you want to bring in new features. You want to write some boilerplate code. You want to fix some errors. You want to basically learn a new language. All of these tasks can be assisted by a coding assistant. So these could be tools like Cursor, Windsurf, Claude Code, and they sit right in your IDE. So there's one part of the IDE in which you are coding and you can see all the code. The other part is in the chat window. So you're chatting with AI, you're asking it to make tweaks and it is doing it live on your database, on your code base. And that's basically what an IDE coding assistant looks like. I've made an entire two hour video showing how Cursor can help you build apps faster. Check out this link if you want to learn more about that. The fifth skill to learn is vibe coding tools. So just like assistants were helping you write code, 
Vibe Coding tools actually build the app for you end to end. So think of it as writing a simple prompt for an app that you want to build and getting an entire app as an output by just writing that one prompt. So these are tools like Replit, Lovable, you have Emergent, you have Anti-Gravity by Google, you have AI Studio. Without writing a single line of code, you can build entire websites, entire mobile apps, you can publish them, people can use them, you can add payment gateways, you can add login authentications. All of this by just typing plain English. That is the power of Vibe Coding tools. Again, I've made an entire video talking about Lovable and Replit on this channel. So go watch those if you want to learn more about it. But this skill is highly underrated. The next skill to learn is RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation. This is basically where you create a retrieval system and you link it with the AI model so that whenever you ask it a question, it has access to a huge knowledge base and it can query specific questions and get the answer that is subjective to you. So for example, let's say you have a massive company that you're working in and the company has internal documentations, agreements, contracts. It has a lot of knowledge built in. If I give access to all of that knowledge to an AI model and ask it any question, instead of just randomly giving me an output, it will access that information and give me the answer that is important with context of my company. The responses are much more grounded, reduces hallucination, gives you more contextual outputs. And this is a very important skill that any company will pay you for. The next skill to learn is AEO, which is SEO for the AI era. It's all about optimizing your website so that AI models like ChatGPT and Gemini showcase your information from your website as the answer. Let's say I run a business in which I'm selling IIT JE mock test papers. And if a user just asks ChatGPT, tell me the best mock test paper for IIT JE, I want to rank for that. I want ChatGPT to recommend my you know, mock test series so that people can go on it and they can buy it and I can get more business. That is what AEO is all about. This new skill is highly in demand and every company is willing to pay top bucks if you can optimize their website for chat models. There are several tools that you can use for this as well. You have tools like Writesonic, you have Surfer SEO that help you do AEO for websites. The eighth skill to learn is AI tool stacking. This is where you are connecting AI native tools so that they have the same context and they can run as one big system. For example, let's say in a company, Notion AI is being used to brainstorm ideas. AR table is where they are keeping track of all of their clients. And they're also using ClickUp for marketing purposes. Now your skill is in connecting all of these AI native tools. So let's say how can Notion AI communicate with ClickUp? How can ClickUp communicate with Airtable? That's basically what AI tool stacking is all about. And there are so many companies who are using so many services, but they want it all to be connected. They want it all to communicate with each other. And that's where the skill comes in handy. The next skill to learn is AI content generation. This is all about creating content at scale without having a huge overhead of people that you've hired. There are tools like Opus AI that help with repurposing reels, 11 labs for generating AI voice. There is HeyGen for creating AI avatars. There are AI video editors also popping up that allow you to edit videos to create content, posts, videos, reels, you create an end-to-end -end pipeline so that one company can just enter an idea for a content piece. It then turns into a script, which then turns into audio, which gets connected to HeyGen, generates the AI avatar video, and then a video editor can then edit that video. A massive podcast, which can automatically be cut down into various different clips using Opus clips. That's the kind of skill that AI content generation is all about. And the last skill to learn is LLM observability. All companies today are using AI for something or the other, but they want to know how is AI impacting their bottom line? What are the costs? What are the outputs of AI tools in their organization? And that's where LLM observability comes into the picture. So you build a dashboard where any company can see how is AI being used in customer support? How is it being used in sales? What are the outputs like? What are the quality of these outputs? How much cost is it going to be for us? You can literally observe everything that LLMs are doing for your business and you can find out the problems, you can find out the benefits and you can optimize based on that. There are various tools which offer you this. 
There's one company I met in San Francisco called Helicone. Other ones like Weights and Biases and Arise that help you do this. Many companies don't have this observability set up. So they're just randomly using AI and it's costing them lakhs and crores of rupees. But you can come in handy and set up this for them. So these, my friends, were the 10 AI skills that you can learn in 2026. Let me know below if you have any questions. And if you want to learn these skills in depth, you can also check out Coursera with the link in the description. They have some amazing courses on AI that you can get started with. If you want me to make any other video around AI, let me know about that as well below. And let's learn and grow and become the best version of ourselves this new year. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.